The LaCroix SDA-8ZI series of serial data analyzers provide superior serial data analysis using superior jitter breakdown methodologies and tools, more jitter debug and analysis tools, and faster time to insight. Multiple active displays of all jitter measurements are provided, which can be zoomed and measured with markers. Up to 36 simultaneous measurements can be displayed on the signal waveform, jitter, and eye pattern. The most common way of viewing a serial data signal is by its eye pattern, shown here for a 5 gigabit per second PCI Express Generation 2 signal. The eye pattern is computed on a continuous acquisition of the signal using up to 512 million samples. A software clock recovery feature in the SDA2 provides standards compliant reference clock generation for both eye and jitter measurements. In this example, the PCI Express Generation 2 standard is selected and the appropriate clock recovery for that signal. More accurate eye pattern analysis is provided using the ISOBUR feature. ISOBUR are lines of constant bit error rate and they show the precise eye closure for specific bit error rates. The lines shown here cover the range from bit error rates of 1 in 10 to the 6th to 1 in 10 to the 12th. The compliance mask is displayed showing that this device passes the mask down to the specified bit error rate of 1 in 10 to the 12th. While the eye pattern provides a good overview of the signal integrity, interoperability requires more in-depth analysis of the jitter. Jitter measurements are accessed by enabling the jitter measurement function in the SDA2. Once enabled, the total jitter, random jitter, and deterministic jitter are displayed. These values constitute the compliance measurements, which are generally defined in terms of the total and deterministic jitter. If the compliance measurements are not in the proper range, then more in-depth analysis is needed to isolate the cause. The Jitter Analysis menu of the SDA2 enables progressive breakdown of individual components. The first level of analysis is data-dependent jitter. The Pattern Analysis Control allows views of the intersymbol interference caused by the channel the signal is passing through. Here, the average timing error of each bit in the data signal can be viewed. A repeating data pattern is automatically detected if present. Non-repeating data patterns can also be measured. The data-dependent jitter is removed from the signal after it is measured, and the remaining jitter is analyzed in the frequency domain. The random jitter plus bounded uncorrelated jitter spectrum, also known as RJ plus budge spectrum, displays the frequency content of the jitter. Repetitive jitter sources such as power supply and clock leakage and some forms of crosstalk will appear as discrete lines in the spectrum. The measurement threshold, shown in yellow, separates the noise floor of the spectrum from the peaks. All jitter below this line is measured as random jitter by summing the energy in the bins below the threshold to determine the RMS value of the random jitter. The spectral bins above the threshold are transformed back to the time domain. This trace shows the periodic non-data dependent jitter in the time domain. Its peak-to-peak -peak value is the periodic jitter, or PJ. The histogram provides a statistical view of the jitter. The RJ plus budge histogram includes all of the jitter in the spectral display, which does not include the data-dependent jitter. The time interval error, or TIE histogram, shows all of the jitter. Both histograms are displayed superimposed on this display. The red lines show the RJ plus budge histogram plotted on a Q scale. This scale displays Gaussian curves as a line. The slope of this line indicates the random jitter. In some cases, such as where crosstalk is present, the Q-scale is a more accurate estimation of the RJ. The jitter breakdown parameters can be displayed using the jitter parameter controls. There are two methods for measuring the total random and deterministic jitter, spectral and Q-scale. The former uses the spectrum to find the random jitter, while the latter uses the slope of the Q-scale lines. In this case, the spectral method slightly overestimates the total jitter due to the crosstalk in the adjacent lanes of the 16-lane PCI Express graphics card. The crosstalk in this case looks like noise in the jitter spectrum, causing the spectral method to measure the bounded crosstalk as random jitter. The NQ scale jitter breakdown would have provided a more accurate result with crosstalk present. 
Many of these jitter views can be quickly accessed with a quick view control, which enables a full measurement of all jitter and eye pattern measurements at the touch of a button. The LaCroix SDA-8ZI series of serial data analyzers provides superior serial data analysis at speeds 10 to 100 times faster than other oscilloscopes. This specific example showed how the deep LaCroix SDA-2 toolbox was used to understand the effects of crosstalk on a serial data jitter measurement.